Are ghosts real? I'm Robert Joe, and you're about to find out right now. I Wouldn't Go In There starts now. I went to the haunted house at Yeongdo. The ghosts there were playing a prank on me. I love stories like this. Ghost stories. A lot of torture place, a lot of people die there. We heard a voice. About places we're not supposed to go. We're warned not to go. But I'm no ghost hunter. The fear, the superstition, always hides a bigger story, a true story. What really happened here? And if you knew, would you still go there? blogger and urban explorer. Korea is my home country. And I recently came across a concentration of ghost stories in an abandoned house located in a remote Korean East Coast fishing village. I don't believe in ghosts. My theory is places that attract large numbers of paranormal sightings often have something in common, a true horror or tragedy that took place there buried somewhere in its past. And this was an investigation I couldn't resist. So infamous was this house that it had attracted a constant stream of amateur ghost hunters. I wanted to know why. I found a shaman practitioner of ancient mystical rituals who claim to have seen ghosts in the Yongduk house. I've been a shaman for more than 20 years. When evil spirits want to take revenge or harm people, I carry out rituals to stop them. The television station wanted to make an episode about unexplainable stories, and I was invited to appear on the show. I heard uh, strange sounds, like a woman weeping, and I followed the sound. It really shocked me. I think it was a woman in her mid or late twenties. Her face looked weary and her eyes were filled with light so bright it was hard to make out her pupils. They looked like a beast in the dark. I could tell that she had experienced some terrible injustice. I felt the pain in my head. She hated people entering the place and she was very disturbed. So I started to speak to her. But she didn't answer me. I 
A female crew member said a lady kept touching her shoulders. She was in shock and her whole body frozen with fright. There had been dozens of rumored ghostly encounters in this house on the hill. What really happened at Young Duck House? Even though the shaman claimed she contacted a ghost, I needed to find out about its history to see if that might help explain its notoriety. I made my way along the winding eastern coast. The house was located in an otherwise unremarkable fishing town. On my walk up the hill, I noticed something. Every corner I turned, there was no one. A guest house with security was right beside the House of Haunts. It seemed an odd place to expect paying guests to stay. Hey, 안녕하세요. Yeah, 안녕하세요. 이 펜션 언제 지으셨는데요? 2004년도 6월 말경에 오픈했어요. 내가 처음에 여기 올 때야. 귀신이 나온다 해야 그런지 모든 게 자연 그대로 있고 사람의 다른 사람의 흔적도 없고 정말 뭐 깨끗하고 공기 좋고 그래갖고 내가 이 정착하기로. What kind of rumors are there about this house? 소문으로 그걸 목을 매가 죽었다는. 그러니까 소문이 나니까 매입자가 없으니까 땅도 좀 흘러가게 산 편이. 저도 그 소문을 저 홍보를 많이 했습니다. 소문 덕에 나는. 여기에 정착 잘하고 있습니다. 덕분에. Whether a suicide took place here, or whether that was just part of the haunted house legend, made no difference to the neighbors. They capitalized on it either way. So this is the Young Duck House. I just arrived. Time to take a look inside and see what I can find out. All right, someone spray painted a lot of fours along this top part here. Death in Korea. So this is the Young Duck House proper. I'm about to take a step inside. Let's see. Huh. That sign says, seriously, don't come in here. That is a dead chicken. Oh, it's kind of stuck though. That looks relatively recent. I don't know if this means there were some sort of rituals performed here. I mean, maybe this might be something to do with the shamans here. So, maybe this was where our witness started getting headaches, started feeling something. The dead bird could have been a recent shamanistic offering, an indication of recent ghost sightings. I wanted to track down a shaman who could tell me more about the superstitions surrounding the house. I'd come to Young Duck a town on Korea's east coast, to investigate a house on a hill said to be one of the most haunted in the country. A Korean shaman had said she'd encountered a female ghost with glowing eyes. And a neighbor said there had been rumors of a girl committing suicide. On my first exploration of the house, I found strange graffiti and a dead chicken 
which looked like a recent shamanistic sacrifice. I wondered if the shamans could tell me about what might have happened here. Shamans were believed to be very powerful by many here in Korea. Around 300,000 of them still practice this ancient belief of reconciling the dead with the living. And these shamans believed they still had an important role to play in modern society. I tracked down the shaman who said she came face to face with the ghost at Yongduk House. I hoped she could give me an explanation for the alleged persistent hauntings there. What is shamanism? The dead can't pass a message to the living themselves. We play a part in connecting them and allowing them to communicate with each other. We come in and play the role as middleman. People would prepare food on the table as offerings to their parents or siblings who had passed on. Why is shamanism relevant in Korea today? Like how filial piety is practiced in Korea, where parents practice Confucianism and pay respects to the ancestors, all these beliefs are carried down to shamanism. In Korea, ceremonies like this gut were held for many reasons. To ensure good fortune, to communicate with ancestors, to pacify the dead. Madame Im decided to then show me how a ritual was performed. She said her body became a vessel for the dead to communicate with the living. And she wielded sharp knives to demonstrate her power and fearlessness to any lurking evil spirits. I participated in the ceremony, but I must admit, I felt nothing spiritual or paranormal. What I really wanted to know was why she thought so many in the country considered Yongduk House to be one of the most haunted places in Korea. The reason why there are so many ghosts at Yongduk is because Yongduk is a place where the yin energy is strong. That's why they end up gathering there. They don't have their own burial ground or a place to rest. Because of that, they harbor a lot of resentment and they hang around. Madame Im went on to explain that the yin and yang energies were the dark and the light forces of the universe. Yin was the dark, yang was the light. At the Yongduk house, they were out of balance, causing spirits of the dead to exist in limbo. So I just finished a two-hour ceremony, which was kind of tiring for me. I can't even imagine how tiring it was for the shamans who performed it. Uh, and that's only a fraction of what can be up to an eight-hour ritual. And it really is sort of a tour de force uh, display of Korean traditional culture elements all at once. Madam Im was no ordinary witness. She was a shaman. She had theories as to why it was haunted. She told me that in Korea, one of the most common reasons was that these spirits were trying to reconnect with family members over something unresolved. Who had lived in that house? Could the stories have been inspired by something that happened to them? It was a small fishing village. I figured if I asked around, someone would know who used to live there and what might have happened in the house.
I found Mr. On at the harbor. Mr. On, I, I hear you know about the building known as the Yongduk House. Could you tell me about it? My uncle cleared the ground of stones and built his house on top of the hill. From the house you could see the sea, the view was very nice. He decided to set up a seafood restaurant there and live with my grandfather. He would stay over at his house quite often. There are so many rumors. I couldn't believe it. I had found someone who actually lived at Yongduk House. It had been built by his uncle 30 years ago. So it was a restaurant from the beginning? Yeah, yeah. Yes, but he sold the house after about four or five years and moved away with his family. Mr. On didn't speak of any tragedies that befell his uncle or others that lived there, other than business failures and bad luck. The next owner rented out the restaurant business to new tenants. But every new tenant had trouble with his location. The business would fail and they would live with nothing. About four families came and went. So when you were younger, there were no rumors about ghosts? I know the rumors, but they're just rumors that people spread. Eventually, the house became so famous that it was known as the ghost house all over the country. They may have been just stories, but in my experience, ghost stories don't just arise out of thin air. There's usually some real event hidden beneath the superstitions. Well, that was interesting. Uh, it turns out Mr. An did live in the house as a boy. He didn't seem to believe in any of the ghost stories, obviously. Uh, but something happened where four other families came through afterwards, weren't able to run successful businesses. So something about that house wasn't working out for them. Was this simply a case of a bad business location? If Mr. An was right, then the reason for the house's reputation had nothing to do with what happened to the families that once lived there. And that would mean the shaman's theories had no basis in actual events. I decided to head back to the house and see if I could pick up more clues. Maybe there was something I missed the first time. This must be where the people who come and visit this place stay. You can see why someone would want to build something here. The view is, is quite amazing. This is interesting. That sign says under construction, then there's a phone number and the name of a monk, it looks like. That's a relatively modern phone number, actually. I think this might be it. The rumor being that there was a young girl here. For some reason, she killed herself, apparently by hanging. I'm not exactly feeling the presence of ghosts here, but uh, it still feels pretty creepy. I'd searched the upper floors, but maybe the secret lay beneath. It was time to hit the basement. It was eerie, and there was evidence people slept here, like it was some kind of bedroom. Okay, so as I said, here in the basement... More ghost hunters. I hear people moving about outside or something. In any case, I'm not supposed to be here, so... I think it's best to go now. I was running out of ideas. I'd hit the proverbial brick wall. 
A shaman claimed the house was full of lost lingering souls. I had hoped to find a real connection between the people who had lived there and the hauntings. But Mr. Ahn, whose uncle had built the place, had said there was no connection. So I took a shot in the dark and called the phone number I'd seen at the house. There's a phone number and the name of a monk, it looks like. It turned out the phone number really did belong to a Buddhist monk, Jiu. I needed a new lead, and I hoped he had some answers. Monk Jiu, I understand you have a connection with the Yangdekas. Could you tell me about it? A giant snake in the basement. This sounded like far-fetched superstition. Nothing that could help me find out what really happened. What kind of spirits did you see there? Student soldiers? The monk believed the spirits of people who died in unjust circumstances were haunting the house, but they weren't connected to the families who lived there. He mentioned some student soldiers had fought nearby. But he also mentioned a giant snake, which made me think it was all pure fantasy. Still, if there was an actual violent battle, this could be a major break in my investigation. I now had a sense of the story as they saw it, the shamans and monks. It was time for me to try and separate fact from fiction. I'm trying to find information about a place called the Young Duck House. Do you know anything about it? Yes, I have heard about it. The haunted house in Yongdo was called Wusa Garden, a restaurant run by a retired public officer. Were there any incidents of murders or suicides there? There were no violent incidents. Was there anything that might explain some of these stories? The chief investigator began telling me why he believed the house had gained its infamous reputation. Surprisingly, it actually backed up some of what the monk had told me. During the Korean War in 1950, the Allied forces carried out a landing operation at the beach on Jangsa. Many student soldiers died in the operation. Both the North Korean army and our own army lost many men. All of them were buried at that area. Okay, so I just talked to the police and despite all of the rumors surrounding the house, there doesn't seem to have been any record of a murder or a suicide or anything particularly violent, except if you go back to the Korean War. Now, apparently there was some sort of a battle that happened right across the street from the house on the beach itself. And that battle was very bloody and a lot of people died. This was huge. There was no evidence of any violent deaths in the house, but apparently numerous student soldiers died near where it was built in a battle during the Korean War. And according to the police, they were also buried there. I found another shaman who actually lived in the house and said she had encountered ghost soldiers. At the time, I was about 38. I didn't know much about spirits. Once after I prayed, Buddha told me that I should go and live in the haunted house. But I asked him, why do I have to go to that sort of place? I just wanted to live peacefully. Somehow, for some weird reason, I ended up going there. Ah! 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 
There were many student soldiers there. They said that they would look out for me, honor me, and help me. After that, I went into the big room next door. There were male student soldiers in there. They said they would honor me if I stayed. The shaman said she saw the spirits of dead student soldiers. And the monk had mentioned soldiers and people who had died unjust deaths. What kind of army would be made up of students? Rumors about the hauntings at Yongduk House are extensive. From claims of seeing a thousand souls to the sightings of a serpent guardian deity. I wouldn't go in there. Stay tuned to the National Geographic Channel. My search for any evidence of a domestic tragedy linked to Yongduk's infamous haunted house came up empty. But then I discovered a bigger story that had nothing to do with the house. A bloody battle in the Korean War had been fought here on the beach overlooking the house. Some locals believed restless souls had been left behind. They also said there were bodies buried on the hill where the Yongduk house now stood. All of them were buried at that area. I wanted to know why students would have been involved in a war and whether there were really bodies buried on the hill. To find out what really happened at Changsa, I tracked down an eyewitness who could take me back to that fateful day. Pak Suk Jin, a local village head, was only 11 during the Korean War, but told me both he and his family had witnessed the horrors of Operation Changsa. It was September 14, 1950. I was at home with my father and grandfather. Early that morning, ships were firing cannons and warplanes planes were flying overhead. The rending was on the other side of that hill at Changsa Beach. The student soldiers captured the hilltop there, and the North Korean soldiers ran up to the other hill over here. When the bullets hit the rocks, sparks flew, it was like a roasting beans, the pop, 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 pop sounds. It was a heavy battle. The student soldiers and the North Korean soldiers shooting at each other. We could see it with our own eyes. Back then, there were few trees and no forest, so we could see people moving and crawling. The Allied soldiers had to temporarily bury the dead soldiers there at the bottom of the haunted house. My investigation had turned from urban myths and superstitions about what happened in Yongduk House to what really did happen in that area more than 60 years ago. There'd been a battle on the hill where the house now stood, and some locals said that high school student soldiers that had been killed in the battle had been buried on the hill. Who were these high school students? This was no haunted house tale. This was the Korean War that split a country in two. More than two million died. Why were such young men fighting as soldiers? Were they conscripts or volunteers? I contacted Colonel Donald Boos, an expert on the Korean War. 
the initial North Korean attack, they managed to capture Seoul. The Republic of Korea forces and other United Nations allies went on the offensive uh, to push the North Koreans out of South Korea. General MacArthur realized that he could land on the west coast at Incheon and cut off the North Korean lines of communication. What about fighting specifically in the Yongduk region at the time? As part of the attack to the north, it was decided to make a, a landing in the vicinity of uh, Jiangsa uh, in order to cut off the North Korean lines there to, to facilitate the attack by the 3rd Rock Division. Uh, it also would uh, be a deception operation to confuse the North Koreans as to where the main attack was going to come. It was intended to take place at the same time as the Incheon landing. Chaos is often the state of things in the fog of war. I wanted to know if it was true that high school students were used as soldiers. It was a very difficult time for the Republic of Korea and they were looking for soldiers everywhere. The unit that conducted the Jiangsa operation uh, was a unit of about uh, 800 young men, some of them of high school age. High school student soldiers on a mission to save their country. This seemed remarkable, but why did so few people know about this? The Incheon operation was so large and successful, and other things were going on at the time. So the Changsha operation was kind of forgotten. The disastrous Changsha landing operation near Yongduk's haunted house was overshadowed in the history books by the much larger and successful Battle of Incheon on Korea's west coast the same day. But I did find one account of what had happened here. This person says that when they were sent off, the sergeant said to them, go home, get some rest, and get two of your favorite books, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 in the morning. Uh, there's a lot of these little details, that, and it gives you a sense that uh, they were quite unprepared and just sort of rushed off to battle. Um, and apparently, some of them are still alive. I tracked down two survivors who had been high school student soldiers in the Changsha landing operation. They could tell me what I couldn't find in books. The survivors believe they were used as a decoy. They thought they had been used as part of a strategy to divert the North Korean military leadership's attention from the larger attack on the west coast at Incheon. Here at Changsa, their group of untrained and underarmed student soldiers was the only one taking part. The 1st Marine Division moves through Incheon. This city is recaptured against relatively light resistance. 
Allied casualties are few. 인전 상공을 성공시키기 위해서 메카다 장군의 작전 명령에서 우리는 희생타. 그때 케지오라는 태풍이 막 파도가 5m, 6m 막 내리쳤어요. The weather turned out to be a fatal turning point. The student soldiers had planned to land just before dawn. Instead, they arrived weak and unprepared in daylight, in full view of the North Korean army. Some drowned before they even reached the shore. <laughs> I mean, there's no cover on the beach, though. How did you protect yourselves? Do you have an idea of how many of your people died that day? 후퇴할 때 파악할 때 인원이 400명이니까 한 300여 명이 죽었어요. Do you know where they're buried? 단지 그 이장이 그 시체를 그 막아 수집해서 그 모두 나왔다 가는 거는 우리가 알고 있는 정도죠. 근데 그 그때 이야기는 약한 99가 그게 묻혀 있다는 이야기를 들었어요. 이또 언덕 밑에 있었다 하는 것도 그래 그니 요금 뭐 국방부 그 유해 발굴단에서도 자신 없어가 지금 그 하질 않고 그냥 나 들어가는 거라. The difference between speaking with a living witness and reading something out of a history book is just huge. The amount of detail and the vividness of what happened really comes out. Usually in, in, in these investigations, uh, you hear about bodies buried under a hill and it's always an urban legend, but in this case, it might actually be true. I discovered the true tragedy of the story. Student soldiers, woefully undertrained, sent into battle only to be slaughtered. Theirs was a mission they could in no way have been ready for. Some bodies remained, buried up on the hill at Yongduk. Why had they been left there, the dead, unclaimed? Two brave investigators. A Korean shaman ritual is called gut. There are numerous rituals for different purposes and can run from a couple of hours to a few days long. I Wouldn't Go In There continues now on the National Geographic Channel. I was in Korea to investigate a haunted house on a hill. It turned out it wasn't the house that was the story, but unclaimed bodies that lay beneath it. The bodies were of high school kids thrown into war in a desperate attempt to take back South Korea from the north. The operation was called the Changsa Landing Operation. How many died in the battle is still a mystery.
The survivors I met wanted closure, an exhumation of their fallen brothers, some of whom they believed were still buried on the hill that Young Duck House was built on. It turned out that the survivors' story just got worse. As students, they weren't even listed as soldiers. And that meant there were no official records as to who served and how many died in battle. Everything was stacked against the unrecognized veterans. So this is it. The story is the hill, not the house. Somewhere around here, uh, 63 years ago, a huge battle took place people died and they might be buried right here although I really can't find any evidence of it I'd contacted the Department of Defense I want to know why the bodies of those young student soldiers were left up on that hill But they preferred to not discuss the matter and didn't take an official position. So for those who died here, it does seem like a peaceful enough place to be buried. But the survivors, uh, they want official recognition for their pain, their suffering, the sacrifice. You would think that a burial in a veteran's cemetery would be appropriate. And so I guess we'll never know just how many people are buried here. The more I found out, the more I realized why the survivors continued to be haunted by the horrors of war. They believed the authorities did not want to exhume their fallen brothers' bodies. When they fought at Jiangsa Landing, these school-age soldiers were not officially recognized as part of the South Korean army. Clearly, the events of that day had been so traumatic that emotions still ran high. The Incheon landing changed the war, but the forgotten attack, the Changsa operation that diverted the enemy's attention from Incheon, played a crucial part. Like any registered soldiers, these student soldiers contributed no less to the freedom of South Korea. Why is there such a I asked them why they thought the official casualty count was lower than they believed. South Koreans have recaptured Yongdong. We had held our beachhead. Now we were on the offensive, and it was the beginning of the end for the communist invasion of South Korea. Looking back, how do you feel about Changsa now? Changsa상륙에대한 Seoul was liberated in fierce street-to-street -street fighting. This capital city, once with a population of a million five hundred thousand persons, had suffered terribly during its brief period under communist rule. Many people claim the house on the hill was haunted by ghosts, spirits of those who died from unjust causes. But the real truth about Young Duck had nothing to do with these urban myths and superstitions, and nothing to do with the house itself. There was a true tragedy here that unfolded on the hill the house was built on. And the real injustice 
was one of undertrained student soldiers sent to their deaths against battle-hardened North Koreans. A story that history largely overlooked and one that continues to haunt the survivors today. To check out my blog and some exclusive extras, visit IWGIT.com. What's my next haunted location in Asia? Tune in next week to find out. In the next episode of I Wouldn't Go In There. I came to Penang, Malaysia to investigate the history behind a ghost story. I was too scared to look. How would I separate fact from fiction? I wouldn't go in there next Friday night at 11 on the National Geographic Channel. Starts now. I went to the haunted house at Yeongdok. The ghosts there were playing a prank on me. I love stories like this. Ghost stories. In a lot of torture place, a lot of people die there. We heard a voice. About places we're not supposed to go. We're warned not to go. But I'm no ghost hunter. The fear, the superstition, always hides a bigger story, a true story. What really happened here? And if you knew, would you still go there? been dozens of rumored ghostly encounters in this house on the hill. What really happened at Young Duck House? Even though the shaman claimed she contacted a ghost, I needed to find out about its history to see if that might help explain its notoriety. I made my way along the winding eastern coast. The house was located in an otherwise unremarkable fishing town. On my walk up the hill, I noticed something. Every corner I turned, there was no one. <laughs> A guest house with security was right beside the house of haunts. It seemed an odd place to expect paying guests to stay. Hey, 안녕하세요. Yeah, 안녕하세요. 이 펜션 언제 지우셨는데요? 2004년도 6월 말경에 오픈했어요. 내가 처음에 여기 올 때야. 귀신이 나온다 해야 그런지 
모든 게 자연 그대로 있고 사람의 다른 사람 흔적도 없고 정말 뭐 깨끗하고 공기 좋고 그래갖고 내가 이 정착하기로. What kind of rumors are there about this house? 소문으로 그걸 목을 매가 죽었다는. 그러니까 소문이 나니까 매입자가 없으니까 땅도 좀 흘러가게 산 편이. 저도 그 소문을 저 홍보를 많이 했습니다. 소문 덕에 나는 여기에 정착 잘하고 있습니다. 덕분에. Whether a suicide took place here or whether that was just part of the haunted house legend made no difference to the neighbors. They capitalized on it either way. So this is the Yongdak house. I just arrived. Time to take a look inside and see what I can find out. All right, someone spray painted a lot of fours along this top part here. Death in Korea. So this is the Yongdak house proper. I'm about to take a step inside. Let's see. Huh. That sign says, seriously, don't come in here. <laughs> oh, wow. And that is a dead chicken. It's kind of stuck, though. That looks relatively recent. I don't know if this means there were some sort of rituals performed here. I mean, maybe this might be something to do with the shamans here. I'm Robert Joe, blogger and urban explorer. Korea is my home country. And I recently came across a concentration of ghost stories in an abandoned house located in a remote Korean East Coast fishing village. I don't believe in ghosts. My theory is places that attract large numbers of paranormal sightings often have something in common, a true horror or tragedy that took place there, buried somewhere in its past. And this was an investigation I couldn't resist. So infamous was this house that it had attracted a constant stream of amateur ghost hunters. I wanted to know why. I found a shaman, a practitioner of ancient mystical rituals, who claimed to have seen ghosts in the Yongduk house. 한 20년 넘게 하다 보니까 I've been a shaman for more than 20 years. When evil spirits want to take revenge or harm people, I carry out rituals to stop them. 재령 좀 테마 다 없앨 수 있는 그렇지는 못해요. The television station wanted to make an episode about unexplainable stories, and I was invited to appear on the show. I heard uh, strange sounds, like a woman weeping, and I followed the sound. It really shocked me. I think it was a woman in her mid or late twenties. Her face looked weary, and her eyes were filled with light so bright, it was hard to make out her pupils. They looked like a beast in the dark. I could tell that she had experienced some terrible injustice. I felt a pain in my head. 
She hated people entering the place and she was very disturbed. So I started to speak to her. But she didn't answer me. A female crew member said a lady kept touching her shoulders. She was in shock and her whole body frozen with fright.